Hello, everyone. So thank you very much for joining us for part 5B of the Very Rich Fruit Cake, Christmas Cake, Anniversary Cake, Wedding Cake demonstrations. And you can see that what I'm doing here, I've got this whole block, uh, which is a kilogram of ready to roll fondant icing. Uh, again, just like I said in the previous demonstration with the royal icing, um, you can make this yourself with icing sugar and egg white um, and you make it um, to a consistency so that it is more of a this kind of paste rather than um, sort of a fluffy liquid uh, consistency for the royal icing. So and there are going to be lots of um, recipes online to make fondant icing with if you're so inclined but to be fair you know, the, the manufacturers, the retailers make some very good fondant icing now, but it's always worth taking out the pack and either in two halves, if you can't manage it all together, um, working it so that it becomes really soft and pliable because then the easier, it, it makes it so much easier to actually roll out. Unlike the marzipan, which you do um, in two halves, if you like, around the edges and on the top, with the fondant icing, you do it as a whole thing and uh, you'll see me ease it onto the cake later on. So I've got it really nice and pliable. I did cheat. I did put it into the microwave for about 20 to 30 seconds just to get it all the molecules uh, moving a little bit. Don't be afraid of uh, using a microwave um, as long as you don't overdo it and sort of really, cook, you know, have it molten liquid. Um, they are very useful. They get the old molecules working inside much quicker than just using doing it by hand like this uh, and as long as you stay with the microwave um, and don't let it sort of go too long it's fine it's a very good piece of equipment to use to help so now that i've worked this and it's getting a little bit warmer and a lot more pliable than the very hard brick it was to start with okay this is what we're going to do next We've got some icing sugar here. This is just pure icing sugar, not, not royal icing sugar in the box. Uh, and I've got my cake nearby. You can see my cake there under the camera. I'll move that away just for a second. And the cake is like it was for the royal icing. I have put, I've just very lightly brushed some egg white all over it. Not so that it's completely, you know, saturated, but it is sticky. Okay. And I'm using my sift, sieve to just sift um, quite a lot of icing sugar over the table, okay, because this is going to grow quite large when I start rolling it out. So I'm going to put the icing on the top and I'm going to sift some, um, some of the sugar on the top as well. And I've got my rolling pin and I'm literally going to roll it out nice and flat. And every so often just check that it's not sticking to the table because that's its favorite trick. Now, again, I've got way too much icing sugar here. This is uh, probably double the amount I actually need for one cake. However, quite like a, a thick layer of icing. So I'm just rolling it out. And the, the, the width that you want is if you take the cake and you can use a ruler here, and measure, so that's about eight, seven or eight centimeters by that much, which is about 20 centimeters plus eight. So you're talking about what, 28, 36 centimeters. That's about a ruler, um, an old ruler. There we go. It's about that kind of size you want to roll it into. And the thicker you have it, the easier it is for the next job. Now that I know that I've got at least as much as I need rolled out, I'm now going to take my icing and I'm literally rolling it. And as I say, if this is thick, which this, this icing is, it makes life so much easier when it comes to putting it on. Now I'm gonna get rid of that, move it out of the way um, so that I've got a clean area and I'm gonna wipe the board off, or wipe the, the table off like so. Unlike the marzipanning that you do on greaseproof paper, uh, as long as you've got plenty of icing sugar down, it shouldn't stick to the table. 
And now I'm just going to clean the table off a little bit so I can get my board on without it creating too much mess. There we are. And I'm literally now going to just drop the icing. Whoops, wait a minute, it's started to... And I'm literally going to just take the icing and just let it drop over. Now, if you've got any holes that arise now, do not panic. Okay, what I'm going to do, you can see me under the camera here, just easing very gently the icing into the cake and down to the to the edges down to the to the board like so and if you have cracks appear don't worry because literally very very gently softly rubbing over with your fingertips just literally blends those away it's that simple if you create any holes or areas where it's not got any icing you can literally cut off the excess and weld it into place you can use a little bit of um of egg white to do that with and i'm pushing the icing in so that it's making a really secure sort of connection and using my the, the palm of my heel of my uh, palm there i'm literally pushing it in to make it a really nice snug fit so i'm packing it in it's a nice thick layer of icing and i'm packing it in I've got lots of excess on this side, but that doesn't matter. You'll see what I do next. And make sure it touches right down to the bottom of the base of the cake, like so. Um, and let's lift that up and just ease that in, just you, with your hand cupping it round the corners if you've got a square cake, like so. And literally just push it in, like so so that it touches now we've got a little bit of a flap there that's a bit of a an overlay there but that doesn't matter because as long as you very gently rub it round in circles very lightly any lines will disappear like so so now that we've got it connecting and we've literally very gently sort of pushed it onto the egg white and the egg white acts as glue okay we can now start trimming okay so we've pushed it down with it's flat up against the sides it's stuck well to the sides it would be very difficult for you now to try and lift that off so when you're positioning it make sure that you've got it sort of just about evenly sort of covering the cake so that you haven't got a huge area to sort of fix later on but that's quite nice now if i use my cook's knife now and just literally straight down like so down to the board try not to cut the board like so these are the excess bits that we can take off we can make into snowmen or little animals or whatever your design says it's going to have and i'm literally going straight down to the board and cutting off the excess so literally, I'm cutting down, let's move that into the frame a bit better. There we go. So let's cut that off like so. Hey presto. And there's the last one, like so. So we've got rid of the excess now, and I can put that into a freezer bag, uh, wrap it up in polythene, cling film, whatever you like, uh, and that will be good um you know for when i want to decorate something else or put another layer of icing on something else in the future it will certainly last in your cupboard uh, or even your fridge if you want to keep it in a bag in a fridge okay and that can be used uh for later on so i'll move that out of the way that's a little less than half of the block so i have used just over half of the block now that what you do is you are now trying to get rid of those lines where you either folded or where there's a crease in the icing. So I recommend um, getting some of the icing sugar on your fingertips. And literally, it is now just spending a few minutes literally just rubbing. Try not to press because you'll create like an indentation in the actual icing. But sort of 
over little lines like that, just literally very gently keep running, rubbing your, your finger over those lines and they literally disappear. So I'm going to get a little bit more of, of the, uh, the sugar on the top and I'm literally rubbing it and getting rid of any sort of uh, imperfections, if you like, in the icing. If you want it absolutely perfect, like so. And I'm going to turn this one into a present later on with a big sort of bow on the top. So I'll show you a little technique in the future about how to decorate but you will need ice. Uh, you'll need royal icing if you want to do any pipe work. It's royal icing that you use, not fondant icing. This is fondant icing, and it gives you a beautiful sort of flat, smooth finish of a cake. Uh, so what I'm going to use now is the side of of my blade, and I'm literally just tucking under. There we go, tucking under the icing so that it's a nice smooth finish. So that's one side that looks pretty decent. It's lovely and flat on the top, but you can make sure it's absolutely perfect by just rubbing over it. Let's turn it round. And again, I'm literally spending just a few minutes tucking it under so that it's really nice and get some more um, sugar icing sugar on there now this kind of icing is great for this kind of finish if you want a really crisp corner um, you can achieve it with with fondant icing if you're sort of angling it and sort of trying to force it into corners but really you would use royal icing for that uh, make the royal icing slightly thinner um, so that it gets really flat. Or, of course, you could fondant icing it, fondant ice it first, and then you could pour some royal icing over it. Now, we've got quite a, a big sort of uh, line here. So I'm going to just take some onto my fingers and just literally smooth it and it will disappear eventually. There we go. So this is a lovely, lovely, plain, smooth surface, a bit like an artist's canvas, really, that you can then think, well, am I going to pipe some things around the edges? Am I just going to put a ribbon round and put a little scene on the top? It does look like snow. You don't have to have fluffy snow for it to look like snow. So you could put your little um, figurines and things on the top if you wished. And this is the last corner. So I'm literally just pushing it in now. And let's take some more of the icing sugar and just rub it into any sort of grooves or lines. Okay, so we're on to the last stretch now and go all the way around it until you're happy. Now, this one, obviously, you know, the cakes that I've iced today, um, I am going to leave under a, just a, a tea towel so that the air can get to them and start drying them. And even fondant icing will dry Certainly the outer layer will dry hard, um, but this is the one that people, some people like because it's not hard. It doesn't go as hard as royal icing for a certain fact. Um, this is the one that some people like because it's soft and it's easier to eat, um, you know, and certainly easier to cut through as well, this particular icing. So, right, so we're right at the very last side now so get some more and let's really just just rubbing over and over very gently and it'll get rid of any of the lines any of the cracks over the edges and the corners and make sure that you're happy with it before you finish and that will be done 
there we go the last corner is there let's tuck that under and make sure that that's well underneath okay and uh, you know this this kind of icing you can you can rub it to sort of mask any imperfections in the marzipan panning underneath as well so you can uh, get it nice and straight if it wasn't quite as straight as you'd hoped and I think that's not a bad job for this cake not too bad at all there you are so what I'm going to do before I put it in the cupboard and cover it with some towel I'm going to take my damp clean damp cloth and I'm literally just going to wipe the board clean so that that's not going to set and wreck the appearance of it later on and presto it's a damp cloth there we are nearly there there we are and that is a lovely blank canvas now on which to do my decoration um, and my my gift wrap which you'll see later on there we are and i'm going to give that a few days just to harden the outside off before i start piping and doing any decorating with anything word to the wise though when I learned to do this many hundreds of years ago at school myself, I had uh, one of my best friends made this fantastic, huge white cake, which she fondant iced just like this. And she made a spectacular job of it. And part of her design was that she had a little um, chimney in the middle of her cake, which was round. It wasn't square like this one. But she, she made a little chimney out of marzipan and she made a little Santa to stand next to it. And she wanted to put a little um, ladder up the side so that it looked like Santa had sort of, you know, gone up the ladder and walked to the chimney. And so she used um, the ends of some, of some teaspoons, smaller than that. Um, to create little indentations so that it looked like footprints had gone into the middle of the cake. Because, you know, this is the thing about fondant icing. The outer layer will set. It will go hard. So if you want to stick anything into it, if you let it go too hard for too long, when you push things in, it will crack and it won't look very good. So be mindful if you use fondant icing and you know you're going to be pushing things into the icing, do that before you put it in the cupboard to set, okay? Um, so that you, you've then got those imprints or those areas where you're going to stick things, candles or whatever, they are ready to just put them into and you don't have to press and crack the outer layer of the, uh, of the actual cake. So that's it. I'm not going to put any indentations in mine. I'm going to do some icing on the top of mine, which is which comes later. So mine is ready now to, to put into the cupboard and leave and for a few days until I, I decide uh, what decoration I'm going to put onto it. So there you are, folks. So that was two different types of icing of a very rich fruit cake. Um, good luck with your efforts. And the last one will be, uh, the last episode of this will be episode six, which is basically how to finish them off, decorate them, and different ideas that you can do with them. Anyway, thanks for now, guys. Bye.